back today with video four in our museum sketchbook series. This week, we'll take a look at some work by a few artists who are featured in the Palmer and create some art based on a common style they use called color blocking. We're going to be getting into some color this week, so make sure you have your favorite medium ready to go. Let's get started. Color blocking is a technique where you take colors that are not near each other on the color wheel and pair them together, creating a bold and interesting color combination. The concept of using color this way is derived from the art of Pierre Mondrian, a famous Dutch painter. This type of color exploration is used by numerous artists in the Palmer's collection. One of these pieces is titled Blueberry Field, a painting by Alex Katz. This painting is composed of large sections of color and little detail. Katz spent years trying to find and define his artistic style when he finally discovered his successes with color blocking in portraits and landscapes. Another work that utilizes color blocking is titled Orinda Six and was painted by Ralph Hetzel. This acrylic painting is simplistic, colorful, flat, and bold, all in one. Unlike Blueberry Field, which has some organic shapes and curved lines, Orinda is very straight-lined and more abstract, but still has very little detail. Works like these carry a sense of emotional detachment due to their lack of intimate detail. As you can see, this style of art can be used in many different ways to add dimension and character to an artwork. This week, we'll be using these paintings for reference and using these styles as our own inspiration. So, our prompt for this week is to create a color-blocked scene, much like the styles in the paintings we just saw. Use your medium of choice, so paper collage, markers, crayons, paint, you name it, to create this scene. Represent the scene you choose with as little detail as possible while still making it understandable. Yours does not have to be a landscape, just create something that is representational of your idea using only bold blocks and sections of color. So this week's prompt was really fun for me. I decided to take a different route and not fill the entire page as I've been doing the past few weeks. I drew a rectangle in the middle of my page, roughly the size of a large photograph, and outlined it with my black midliner so that it would be more clear. I decided to do a blocked landscape. I know I said you didn't have to do a landscape, but I like those the best, so that's what I decided to go with. Um, from there, I drew out some sections with my pencil. I added foreground, a sun, and a larger hill. And I ended up erasing my sun and tracing it with the lid of my water bottle so that it would be more round and solid and really bring the rest of the picture together. After that, I was ready to start coloring. But before I get into that, let's see what the rest of the team is doing. For this prompt, I decided to use acrylic paint because this is my favorite medium to work with. I started off my sketch using a pencil and I taped the edges with washi tape because since the lines in the painting are going to be so crisp, I wanted there to be a clean line at the edges. I scrolled through my camera roll to find a picture that I wanted to paint for this sketchbook prompt. I decided on a sunset picture that I took from my window of my front yard. It has a sunset, some trees, and the sky and a couple bushes. I started in by just filling in all of my blocks with different colors. I started with yellow, orange for the bottom of the sky because the sun was setting, and then I moved up to a purple, and then I moved up to a blue for the top of the sky and the clouds. I'm going to fill in the rest with all of the colors that I picked that you saw at the beginning of my video. Hi, this is Brandy. Here's a picture of a finished sketchbook page I made when trying to do this color block landscape. I love the view in my backyard, so I wanted to use it as the basis for the page. And you can see the broad shapes of flat colors defining different areas, but I feel like I ruined it by adding the tree trunks. So I decided to do it again, which is fine. It's a sketchbook, it's casual. And then I looked at it and I realized this is the part that I really like doing, the underbrush area here in dark green. So I decided to focus on a more close up view of that area. And so here I go with that. 
The broad areas of flat color are really well suited to what I enjoy doing in my sketchbook, since I mostly like creating things to color with markers. In focusing on a close-up of the undergrowth, I define just three areas of color, the underbrush in dark green, the tree trunk in brown, and then the sky in the background, which I ended up using a light purple because I thought it would mix well with both the green and the reddish brown. In the end, I think it's kind of funny I added the texture to the brush and the additional colors for details to the tree since we were going for solid uniform colors. Oh well, I guess I lost track and couldn't help myself. And I had fun and enjoyed sitting outside drawing on a beautiful sunny day. Hey, it's Hannah again. The only thing I knew going into coloring was that I wanted my sun to be yellow. After that, I just looked into my skinny marker box and chose the colors that I thought would look good. Shout out to my skinny markers because I love them and I use them for everything and I highly recommend getting some if you don't have them already. So, I made my sky orange so that it would be a warm sunsetty tone. But for the land portion of the drawing, I just chose the colors that I liked the best. I tried to keep it neat, but the markers ended up being a little streaky. Um, that's okay though, because not everything you make will be perfect, and I still like how it turned out. I went back and filled in any white spots I missed, and after that I added a border with my new washi tape to make it a little more fun. If you like using color, you'll really enjoy this prompt. I really had fun with the style and I definitely plan on using it again. I loved how my drawing turned out and I hope you guys do too. Painting on paper with acrylic paint is a lot different on, than painting on canvas, but I really liked how the paper kind of folded while I was using the paint. Um, I put the paint on really thickly, which I usually do when I'm doing any painting because I like the texture. I like being able to see it and being able to feel it on the painting. I kept going in and filling in all of the trees and the sky and the bushes. I used a couple different shades of green to give the whole piece a little bit of dimension. And then after I filled all of the colors in and all of the shapes in, I pulled the washi tape off so that there was a border that was very square and very clean, just like all of the color blocking in the painting. For this color block landscape prompt, I decided I wanted to work in collage. Collage is one of my favorite mediums, and as you can see, I collect all different kinds of paper for my collages. I use a lot of old magazines, uh, my collection of colored paper, and then also sometimes uh, security envelopes have really interesting designs. So right here, I'm just cutting out some different shapes to make some clouds. I think one of the reasons that I really like working with collage is because I don't have to commit to any colors or shapes before I glue it down. So you'll see throughout this video that I pick up pieces of paper and kind of lay them down, pick them up again, and play with what different colors I think will look best. I even go back sometimes and cut down shapes that I've already used or I'll discard shapes that I ended up not really needing. Here I'm just looking for the right color palette to go with the shapes I've already cut out. I'm kind of comparing, contrasting until I find something that I like. This was sort of a failed attempt where I thought I was going to do a big piece of green paper in the background, but decided against it and ended up using that strip of paper to create a hill that could sit in the foreground. Then I used some old National Geographic uh, magazines to create another hillside that had some texture and would contrast with the big color blocked pieces of hill that I'd already cut out. After I got the hills created and the clouds finished, I felt like I needed something in the foreground. So I was looking for some paper that would be a nice contrast to what I already had and would pop a little bit. I had a hard time finding the colors that I wanted to work with, but I knew I really liked this little mauve color. So I started cutting out the branches of a tree. This is a shape that I really like to use in many of my collages, so I'm pretty quick at cutting out these branches, but it does take a little practice to get used to it. That's the great thing about this paper, though, is that you can just keep cutting it and trimming it down until you like how it looks. So I was pretty happy with this shape and decided to set it, set it down and just kind of live with it and see what I thought it needed to finish out the composition. I decided to make the trunk just a little bit longer so it would go down past the hillside there. Then I needed some kind of big contrasting color, so I ended up picking this bright red and creating some branches out of that as well. 
With this piece, you'll see that at first I cut out a bigger tree and then realized that it was kind of too much, uh, too busy. So I cut down those branches. Again, I think that's why I like using collage because nothing becomes too precious. You can just cut it up, uh, rearrange, or try something new. Um, unlike painting or drawing with markers, nothing's permanent. You can just keep trying until you like how it looks and then you just glue it all down.